Hey guys, Jensen here with my recap of Golden Gardens vs BDS and I'd like to explore some of the interesting topics that came about from these Worlds qualifying match between the European 4th seed and the North American 4th seed. Now obviously this will include some spoilers from the results of the game so if you do not want to be spoiled this is your warning to turn the video off now or perhaps move to some other type of content instead. Um, you have been warned and now with that I'm gonna ramble on for a little bit first if spoilers are a concern for you, uh, this is not the video for you to watch. Now, of course, there was a fair bit of hopium going into the series between the European and North American fourth seed, uh, with Golden Guardians having complaints of their river uh, of River and Gori, the mid laner and jungler, feeling a little bit homesick before the tournament, or as they were approaching playoffs, explaining their dip in performance then. And now with Golden Guardians, they claim that they spent an entire month in Korea in preparation for Worlds, whereas BDS they only arrived a week before. Despite all of that, and many analysts giving the preparation advantage to the Golden Guardians, BDS was able to take, to take the win in a very dominant 3-0 fashion. Now, of course, this raises the question if the bootcamp in Korea is even an advantage for teams like the Golden Guardians or BDS. If we were to examine the series from the perspective of Golden Guardians, the first game, they played a two-lane pick composition with Kasante, Talia, Yon, Kaisa, and Amumu. And they made a few key errors in this game, where they missed a punish window for Shio's 3 camp gank on mid lane. And after that, they needlessly extended a fight around the bot side river pixel after blowing out the cooldowns which then allowed bds to pick up and win the fight and from that point bds found the easy snowball to win in 21 minutes the second game had them try to go for a little bit of a different approach going for something akin to what damon found a lot of success with in 2020 they went for a trick stacking composition with the likes of belveth in the jungle position enabled by an enchanter or rather mage bot lane of nico support accompanied by a Kalista in the AD carry position. This should give them loss of agency in the bot lane to then influence and create a jungle gap, which they tried to execute towards. While they were able to obtain a few early leads through abusing Adam's laning mistakes and then executing towards River being all up in the faces of BDS as his Bell Vef, a blunder from Huhi cost them the second Drake and some mistakes in executing the team fight on the Nash that BDS force resulted in them being unable to close things out in time, while BDS's team fighting composition came online, resulting in a 2-0 lead for the European 4th seed. Golden Gardens then changed things up once again, realizing that there was lots of skill in team fighting coming from the side of BDS, and played away from the traditional strengths of playing around a very strong mid and jungle, going for the likes of Ivan in the jungle position, and Azir playing an extremely passive game, going for a skilling team fight composition. They were unable to set up for all Jax to get ahead on the side lane and as a result of that we saw him get solo killed by Rihanna a few times in the side lane in this game as well as Garen and they could not find a response to BDS's two lane play in BDS's trick setup. As a result BDS was able to take almost every objective on the map and Golden Gardens simply slowly bled out. Observing the series you could say that the Golden Gardens tried three poorly conceptualized approaches and ended up taking three L's as a result of that. Whereas for BDS things were a lot simpler where they played a bruiser top in every game, they played a team fighting tank jungler in every game, a mage mid laner, a scaling AD carry, and three games of Rakan for Lebrov. They had options to play through the trick objective and a strong mid game team fighting with lots of engaged options. It's simple, it's effective League of Legends that we were watching from the side of BDS, and BDS very clearly knew what they wanted. So, with regards to the current bootcamp, it was said by G2 in 2021 when Worlds was hosted in Iceland when they opted not to go to Korea to boot camp that year that not opting for that option to practice with the top Asian teams was a mistake. Now the benefits of being able to go to Korea to boot camp is that you get access to a higher level of solo queue, you get access to a larger variety of scrim partners and you're able to learn from the elite Asian teams and you're also more up to date with the Worlds meta. Whereas BDS, they stayed in Europe and scrimmed against the EMEA Masters teams and while they don't get the screen likes of TES or JDG, this does build a lot more confidence for them and their opposition. Now, this is definitely credit to the ERL system. While they are not elite, can still provide a fair bit of parity for the likes of the LEC 4 scene. And this allows for the team to build on what they have achieved in the year and then improve on that. 
when it comes to improving from scrimming against better opposition, there's this myth that playing against better opposition will make you better via some form of osmosis. While playing against better opposition can show you what the gap is like, it often does little to help you to scaffold the way forward, especially when the gap is too big. So for the likes of a team like G2, where you are already the elite European team, if the goal is to win worlds and beat the elite Asian teams, the current bootcamp can be argued to be extremely vital. However, what usually happens at these type of events where teams go to Korea is that it results in a loss of confidence and identity as the bootcamp progresses, as you start to face opposition and realize that a lot of the basics and fundamentals are missing from your gameplay and that many of your patented or ideas that were working domestically is no longer working. It also extends a long and draining campaign. This has been something that players have spoken about, about how exhausting and emotionally draining the Worlds campaign can be. And of course, it is known that Asian teams, as well as your opposition, is bound to exchange notes and share your strats and intricacies to the opposition as well. So perhaps for teams like Team Liquid, Cloud9, or Mad Alliance, where you're not exactly the elite team hated to Worlds and trying to win it all, perhaps something can be learned from the likes of BDS, where I have to say kudos to them in the very deliberate choice to stay back behind in Europe, where this enabled them to play the style and in team with the world's team song, play Garen, Olaf, and Darius. And that's my recap of the series between Golden Gardens and BDS, examining what it's like to perhaps uh, some of the disadvantages of going to Korea to take on the boot camp over there. If you enjoyed this stuff content, I'm going to be doing video content all throughout worlds. Uh, that it helps me a lot. If you could drop this a like and subscribe to the YouTube channel as well, or you could follow me on Twitter at JensenGoLOL. And with that, I hope you have had a nice day. Let's get hyped for worlds.